my next the next one we went with D. Mm-hmm. So this one's kind of obvious, but I I really didn't didn't really uh, have a choice. And now he's still kind of young in the league is uh, Kale McCarr, and uh, obviously like he's he's incredible. His skating, his stick handling, his shooting, his playmaking, his vision, his his defense is really good. His offense is really good. Skates elite. His puck skills are elite. He carries uh, carries the game on his back. Right. He's like. Mm-hmm. People have compared him to Bobby Orr recently, and it's like he's kind of that. Yeah, you know, um, he's not overly physical, but he he gets he doesn't have to be, but he's he gets in there, and uh, just really smart. So he played in the Alberta Junior League. That's what I really like about this, and it's not like a lot of people could say, well, um, that was a weird path, but not really because he was going to college anyways. So before he went to college, he couldn't play major junior. So he he played in the Alberta Junior League, which is uh, it, it's not a top tier junior league by any means, but he absolutely dominated that. So he was a first fourth overall, I think it was. Yep, fourth overall. And the NHL been drafted from there, and then he played a year and a half or two years in uh, UMass Lowell, Lowell UMass Amherst, yeah. Amherst, yeah. yeah. And then uh, stepped into the playoffs and dominated right away. So, so um, for him, he did he commit? Do you know if he committed to school before he started playing junior? Was I don't he know one of those before. I think there's a t- age limit that you can. I don't think you can do yeah. it too early. Anyways, yeah, true. Well, he's, yeah, he's a 98. So, anyways, so he played. That, that's a cool. That's he's a cool story though, because that that's a weird path for a fourth overall pick. He's out of the Alberta Junior League, fourth yeah, overall. Yeah, right? I find it weird because not weird, but I find it interesting because. The talent level is off the charts. Mm-hmm. Had to be. But, yep. the, you know, the, if you see highlights of his Alberta Junior League, like he was a stud, like unbelievable, like yep. 14 or 15, 15 or whatever. Yep. So um, he's dominating. So somewhere in his mind, I'm sure, or I'm sure he had the Western teams. This is what I was going to say. Drafting right? him or, or taking a chance. Maybe he'll come anyways. But if you're that good, you probably have a pretty good idea that by 18, 19, you're going to play in the NHL. Yeah. Yeah. Right, like after your draft, yeah. you're going to play in the NHL, and he chose to go to uh, college anyways. So, yeah, interesting. And, and and I mean, obviously, he's he's not not. There's not a lot of uh, Kale McCars, but it's interesting to see he probably could have went and played in the Western League, and he didn't. Yeah, and he still is one of the best players in the NHL right now. He played in a, yeah. a the equivalent of our basically our junior B league here. It's the same is thing. what it is. It's, it's the, the same, same thing. thing. Yeah. And then from there gets his division one scholarship and then goes to NHL from there. So you might like, this is one of the things that especially around here, guys get so caught up on their draft and all that stuff where it's like, I got to play in the OHL. I have to do this. And if they don't, it's just crushing and devastating and, and it's just not necessary. Of course, you have to be a good player. That's always the caveat to everything. It's not just, well, fine. I'll just go get a scholarship instead. It's like, <laughs> yeah. cause a lot of kids think that yeah. too. Yeah. But it's not the worst thing ever if you don't play in the OHL or in the CHL somewhere or whatever. Yeah. Like there are other ways, you know, you got guys that get drafted out of the BCHL to go to like the two of the, the twins last night were talking to me about uh Penticton is talking to them a little bit for next year. Yeah. And uh one of their guys, oh five on their team is supposed to be second or go second round this year or whatever in the NHL draft out of the yeah. BCHL. So it's like, there's no, yeah. there, it's not like you have to be in one place or there's yeah. one place to go. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, there's a couple of things with that is like, as we always say, is that you, you, you can't hide a good hockey player. Yeah. You just can't hide them. People yep. see the good hockey player. And then number two, not, you know, you would think <clears throat> when you're building a business, maybe you think that every, Every move you make is critical to the next move, but that's not true. You can pivot. You're going to make mistakes or maybe that wasn't your best option. But the bottom line, like in business, if you work and you do certain things, you will have a certain amount of success. And it's the same thing in hockey. So not every single move has to be calculated. Not one move is going to absolutely ruin you. Right. Right. So meaning if you had the opportunity to go, you know, the path for most, let's say most kids around here is to go to the OHL or whatever. And uh, if you get there at 16, it's better than 17. Well, not necessarily. Yeah. It's, it's all these steps does doesn't make a difference. What makes a difference is that you play well wherever you're at, and you have good habits, right? Yep. And if you do that and you excel at whatever level you are, that's your best option. Yeah. Because 
honestly, at the end of the day, you know, I'm even looking at the kids I train and my son right now. It's like, you you think this will be the best path. And it, you know, I, I have no, I'm not saying anything negative about it, but it's like, maybe if we waited one more year, maybe that would have been better. Yep. Maybe. Yep. I don't know. Yeah. But it wouldn't hurt. Right. You know, and a lot of times it would, but I don't know. It's anyways, it's a, it's a thing. You're not going to, you're not going to ruin your career right. by making one bad move yeah. or not a bad move, a move that could have been better somewhere else. And the last thing I want to point out about him is he's 5'11", 187. Yeah. So oh. that would be a smaller defenseman. Yeah, hundred percent. So he's a little bit, a little <laughs> bit. He's basically my my size. Yeah. A little bit shorter than me. A little bit less weight than me. And this guy's <clears throat> playing in the mix with guys like, well, the best. Sir, yeah, Eric Goodbranson. That's an absolute yeah. mammoth human. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's like it's another thing that people they get caught up in like, oh, I'm too small and and this kind of stuff, especially as a D. It's like it's not necessarily the case that you have to be huge, yeah. right? It's like you just have to have a skill set and have a type of a game that you play that you can excel at, right? There's not one frame that you have to have to be a defenseman either, right? Yeah, exactly. So, so I just want to touch on that yeah. too. Yeah. The next D that I had was uh, Jacob Truba. That's a nice one. I like him. Yeah, I don't, know a, lot of, like, I don't know a lot about like, him. Uh, when I say this, it's not like I analyze every little part of his game or anything like yeah. that, but when I initially see what he brings, <clears throat> um, you know, over the last couple of years is it's, he's, he gets known for a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And one of the things he, he was named captain of uh, the New York Rangers. Um, but what I know is he's big and he's physical. And what you'll see with the guy like that is like, he, it, you better be aware. He makes you aware that he, that he's on the ice. If not, you're going to get cracked. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I love in a, in a player. It's not just that he's a good defender, which he is. It's not that he just, decent offensively right it's it's he's got that and then also you better be aware because i'm going to take your head off yep. and not only he's gonna he's gonna hit you hard he's also gonna fight you if you have to if yep. he has to or willing to fight you so that's really good he pushes what i would say about him is he pushes the physical limits mm -hmm. right it's like he can hit but then he can hammer you like i think he hits to hurt or whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. and he's ready to go so i like that make keeps people really honest got a fairly good uh offensive mind in my mind and um he's just good all around yeah so his just to point out his path too so he played a uh, national development team in the u.s and then he played at michigan for one year and then he was ninth overall in 2012 so yeah he's also my age so he's 6 3 200 so he's a big body and what's cool about a guy like this, like, here's the thing about, because the size thing, like I just said with Kel McCarr, he's a smaller guy. You don't have to get caught up in the size necessarily. But if you are a bigger guy, it's very important that you try to use that as a tool to your advantage, you know? So there's, a, I was talking to a kid yesterday. So he plays, he's U16 right now. And I was watching him on the weekend. And he's like, he's pretty raw. He's not like a, he's not a real skilled player. And I've watched him play the last few years. And then when I went and watched him play on Sunday, he was like a different player. Like I'd never seen him play like this before where he is just hammering guys, you know, and he's, he's a big kid. He's substantially bigger than me. His dad's a big boy. He'll probably be six, two, six, three, big kid and nice kid, just a nice kid. And I'm watching him play running around like mean, like hitting people hard and not necessarily caring about anything else, like just running into guys. It's bringing and, one thing. Yeah, and and that's okay. And and this is what I was saying. I was like, if I'm a if I'm a if I'm a scout or if I'm a coach or a GM or whatever watching, trying to pick a player out, I'm not saying he's going to be a, a high draft pick or anything like that. But it's like if you see a little bit to his game that you like, but then he also hammers people. It's like maybe we can we can do something with this kid. Like maybe he's worth giving a shot. Like he plays a little bit rough and tough. It's a little bit different, but he's using that size that he has as a tool, right? So I was talking to him yesterday. He was here working out and I was talking to him about it. And he goes, I was like, I've never seen you play like that before. Like what, what happened? He's like, I don't know. He's like, I just like, I'm bigger than everyone. So, so he's like, I feel like I can just do it. And it, like, it makes me feel like I'm strong and that I can have an impact or whatever without saying it in those terms necessarily. But I was like, freaking right, man. Like, good for you. Like tap into the tool that you have. You're given this tool. So, you know, you look at a guy like Truba and it's like, yeah, he, he has a little bit of an offensive capability as a defenseman. If you look at his points. Like one of his, uh, 
one of his best years. He had 50 points, like eight eight goals, 42 assists. His last year in yeah, his last year in Winnipeg, 58 penalty minutes, right? Plus eight. So it's like he's he's not just trying to be an offensive defenseman. He's like, yeah, I can play a little bit of offense, but because I bring that toughness element to the game and I'm using my size to my advantage, that makes me 10x more valuable to my team because I'm using that tool that I've just was blessed to have as yeah. six foot three. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah, well, it's the 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 theme that I or the term that I like to use is they make it they have an impact in the game. Yeah. And that's what I always say about guys that are just offensive. Mm-hmm. That's why you'll notice there's a theme here with everybody that I have is that they always have, they leave a mark on a game, typically every game. And the offensive guys, if they're not scoring, are they making an impact? That's, that's the, the question. And I'm not saying they don't or they right. do, but can you leave an impact in different ways? So that's, that's, those are typically the guys that I like. And so like, think of the contrast. So contrast Kale McCarr to Jacob Truba, completely different, completely different, both extremely valuable to their team in their own own right, you know? So it's like, okay, on my team, would I rather take Kale McCarr or Jacob Truba? It's like, well, if I already have a guy that's pretty skilled as a defenseman, maybe I don't need Kale McCarr and I'd rather take Truba, vice versa. If I already got Kale McCarr on my team or someone like him, maybe I need some rough and tough to play as a partner with, with Kale McCarr or whatever to fill in. He's going to run and gun. So I need somebody that hangs back or something yeah. like that. Right. Yeah. For so sure. there's, there's space for both and that's a totally different kind of player, yeah. you know? So for sure. 